Okay, today I am going to highlight the new SNES do-it-yourself circuit board. But before I go into what it takes to build this, I wanted to uh, talk about a few other things here. And so um, I'm going to pull up here someone who... Uh, makes a do-it-yourself board, if you will. And this is uh, kind of the equivalent of mine, the do-it-yourself for Megabyte. And I just want to highlight here his pricing. And and then he sells the different chips here, there, whatever. Um, so I'm going to just go over here to a price chart. Now, this price chart... I went ahead and expanded out, you know, like if you bought in bulk or if you bought, you know, one, you know, one versus bulk, you know, his pricing, uh, the CIC, the 257, 139, et cetera, et cetera. You know, like you need two of these parts. And so, and two of these. And so I expanded all that down. And if you bought one that uses SRAM, you would be but you'd be being eighteen dollars per build, and then of course if you didn't have SRAM, you essentially subtract three dollars uh, from there. And knowing what I pay for chips, this is his rough profit here. Now maybe he buys more expensive chips. I don't know, but but you know <laughs> this makes me think maybe I should. You know, I mean, this is a great profit margin uh, for doing nothing more than making a circuit board and selling parts. I mean, that's... Phew. Anyways, this is, you know, his cost on circuit boards is probably $2. And and I kind of extrapolated, you know, I deducted what, what you know, I pay for circuit boards and what I pay for parts. And, and if I were to basically do the same thing, you know, this is the profit I would make because... I know what this stuff costs. So, so you know, the CIC, $4, you know, essentially a 50 cent part, you know, and I go, just going down the line. So, so um, and then let's talk about a few other things like what parts we're using. So let's say um, we're gonna use the LS257, okay? And this is what, most people use a lot of people use and uh so we can go down the specifications and we can see that the delay the time it takes for this thing to operate is 21 nanoseconds and most eproms you know like this you know, they say like dash 100, you know, 27C, 322, you know, dash 100. Let's see if I can get one here to focus. Right there, dash 100. That means it, it operates about 100 nanoseconds. And so, um, and so the, the fast ROM uh, Nintendo games, um, is rated at 120 nanoseconds. And so you have a ROM that's 100 nanoseconds, and then you add 21 second nanoseconds of delay, and you are right at the edge of, of operation, let's say. And so, um, and this is probably okay. You know, and then the, 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 low, the low map games, they're they're like 200 nanoseconds, so you can introduce all kinds of delay in those and, and it'd still be okay. And so, uh, but anyway, just for laughs, we'll, we'll go ahead and show you the, the LS part, uh, the 139, the decoder. Um, yeah, 33 nanoseconds for the LS part. And so, um, so not only, you know, do you need the right part for the for the logic but you also need the right pr 
right, uh, light, right speed. And so, um, and so, let's see here. Now we need to talk about SRAMs for a minute. So SRAMs, this dash 55, that is the speed of the SRAM. And a general rule is the faster the speed, meaning the lower the number, the more power it consumes. And so when you're, when you're buying SRAMs, you don't only look at this number. I mean, that's, that's really not a, a number you look at. You know, wh what you want is, what you want to see is the, how much power it draws when it's in standby. Here is one uh, microamp of power that it draws in standby. And so where other SRAMs, and, they, and again, if you find one that's, that's faster, it, it's going to consume more power. Anyway, I'm just showing the best example. There are plenty of examples that are terrible. You know, that'll drain your battery in, in a month or a week versus this one, you know, with the right, you know, save circuitry, this, you know, this one will, you know, you know, t sip power for 20 years. And so, uh, anyway, like I said, I I'm, I'm just going to show you the best examples. Um, there are plenty of worse examples, but now you know what number to look at when you're choosing what SRAM to uh, purchase or to find. So oddly enough, I looked on eBay and there weren't a whole lot many of Alliance SRAMs. So, like for example, let's see here. Here's, a, here's an SRAM by Samsung. It's a, well, it says it's SO, but it looks like it's maybe a dip. But, but a lot of times too, if, if there's an L, L in the in the description that means low power like L like a double L so here this is this is 15 nanoseconds I can guarantee you this is not low power you know to to retain you know memory for you know years and years guarantee so it's just too fast it consumes too much power and so you know and then um uh, let's see here. So, so that's that's just kind of a general overview of, you know. And if you look at the pricing too, let's let's just go ahead and look at this. this is from Mauser, you know. And the pricing for these things is not cheap. You know, this is the most expensive part, you know, that that you will purchase. But if you buy a hundred of them, you know, you're getting them for two bucks, you know. And if you really look online, like findchips.com. You know, I've found them as low as a dollar fifty, and so, um, so you know, you can look around. So, um, anyways, just to just to kind of cap this off about the 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 decoder chip, the LS one thirty nine, and the um, uh, the two fifty sevens, the LS two fifty sevens, the chips we use, the chips we provide with the do-it-yourself kit um, are much faster than this. Ours are rated in the six or seven nanoseconds. And um, uh, let's just say I pay a lot less for them than what's uh, rated listed here. And, uh, you know, here, you know, the LS costs, uh, you know, quite a bit. And I can see why someone would sell it for 85 cents or a dollar each. I mean, I get it, you know, but, you know, that's not smart, you know, decisions. You know, the, you know, I can buy these things for 13 cents and, uh, you know, my cost, you know, plus whatever shipping, you know, you don't even see 13 cents as an option here, you know, and mine's much faster. So you're, there's less likely of a chance that you'll get, um, you know, random resets or, or, you know, 
your you know your game just doesn't work right or the graphics are messed up or something you know you might go oh it's a glitch you know well maybe your chips are a little too slow and so anyways um so with our you know do-it-yourself board we're going to have an option of purchasing all the chips that you would need um and so but but they'll sure be a lot less than what uh what many other people you know provide them for so i mean this this uh you know this is insane you know if you were to buy all the parts from this person it would cost you eighteen dollars and ten cents you know on one to ten okay let's even use you know ten to fifty sixteen dollars really I, I mean we sell the simple save single on mordoffgames.com the board already completely built all parts on cic programmed ready for a rom and it's 14 dollars. you know built done no work um you know ready to go and i should have had a link for this but um this purpose of this video was not to promote my other completely ready boards ready for a rom regardless of mapping already has sram it's ready to go i mean you know, it's the equivalent of this, you know, this line here, but no work involved. Anyways, again, it's not, this video is not to promote my other board. This video is to promote the do-it-yourself board. So, um, you know, and, and people may have their own chips or their, their own whatever, and that's fine. You know, it's... I'm just saying that, you know, there's a right way and a wrong way to do this, and we are all about the right way. So on the next video, just just so I don't run into an hour-long video here, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna make a couple of builds. I've got some, and I've just took some silver sharpie just to kind of highlight what they are. So on the next video. Um, I'll be using the 257s, the uh, 139s, 64, and uh, see, transistors, diodes, whatever. And then these little guys right here. So, and I'll explain those here in just a minute. So, uh, these things here are surface mount capacitors, and they're easy to put on. If you've never dealt with surface mount, don't let that scare you. I'll show you how to put them on easy peasy. So, all right, on to the next video.